another Nogaru desu! And I am a whore for horror. That's nothing new. We all know it. I love it so sweetly, breathlessly, delightfully. I just love horror. Horror, which is, yeah, nothing new considering I made a lot of videos about a lot of horror genre specific things. But I also really love morbid things, which is also not really new information either. Why do I love these things? I don't know. Maybe it's because it's the closest thing that we could see to death while we're alive and we're curious as to what may happen to us. <laughs> Who knows? But going off of that and going forward with things that are obvious, I really love horror manga especially. And I don't mean like horror with like comedy factors or like harem or romance. I mean the kind of horror that has creepy feeling that you get when you look outside and you think you see a figure. Or, you know, maybe you feel like in the middle of the night something touches your hand and it encapsulates that feeling of fear well. Be it with gore or supernatural or whatever the... Hell, it's all just delightful to me. And so it may come as a shock to you that I only recently started reading a quite well-known horror manga called PTSD Radio. If it doesn't look familiar to you, I have some volumes right here. When I started reading it, I was quite surprised because it only has up to 16 volumes. You know, that's fine. That's a decent length for a manga, of course, but it wasn't as long as most horror manga, especially with the story that it encapsulates. PTSD Radio's story is essentially about a god of hair that becomes angry and starts cursing generations upon generations of people that have destroyed its shrine. So we get to see the god from its creation to when its shrine got destroyed to modern day. And we see it haunt and torture the ancestors of the people that destroyed its shrine originally. The god tortures them by distorting their face, by grabbing their hair and just ripping it off, and altogether really kind of just unsettling and freaking them out, which is the number one pull for PTSD radio. The art is very unsettling, which is a word I've said a million times because that is the perfect word for PTSD radio. And the other pull is the story, which is of course, seeing the ancestors go on into their future generations and how they're still being haunted and cursed, ways they maybe try to escape it or they deal with it or potentially even die. The art and every page is nearly haunting. Like I just opened up this random page and this is what I saw. It's gripping, it's detailed, it's scary. Like imagine waking up in the middle of the night and seeing this face. So you can imagine my disappointment when I got to the end of volume five and I saw a note that this would be potentially the last one that the author made. And you know, Fair enough, a lot of, you know, it's an unfortunate reality for a lot of people who read manga that sometimes it kind of does just abruptly end. But the reason he gave as to why he was going to stop, now that, it became a lot more interesting. It's pretty obvious from the beginning that this isn't going to be your typical text that a author might leave at the end of a manga volume. You know, like the ones that say, oh, thank you for reading this, you know, thank you for showing support. And the reason why it's obvious this was obviously different was because it was long, like, long, long, and also it was drawn in manga form. Now he describes the beginning of this little manga within a manga by describing the beginning of when he started PTSD Radio. The mangaka named Masaki Nakayama details how when he was beginning to start PTSD Radio, he needed a much bigger apartment than what he previously had because he had a lot more assistance and a lot more help that he needed you know, they needed room for. And he became lucky. He stumbled upon a massive and just really great, it was in great condition apartment, and it was very, very cheap. He was super skeptical as to why it was so cheap considering that the building was in pristine condition, everything was just perfect. And he didn't become skeptical purely from how cheap and pristine it was, but also because of the fact that nobody else lived in that entire building. Nobody else rented out for work, nobody else did anything, it was just, him that was going to be renting it. Which, if it's such a great building, you know, why would that be? But he began to slowly realize as to why. As he began to move into his new office, he opened a closet and stumbled upon something that is not good. It was a broken part of a shrine. Now, I don't think I need to go into detail as to why finding a shrine, you know, a place that people worship broken in a place might not be a very good thing. And considering gods live in these shrines and having a piece of that shrine, you can probably lead to the thought process that having a piece of that wouldn't lead to good things happening either. He was taken aback, but he ignored it. It did not take long for things to just start happening. Initially, it was just small things that, you know, really couldn't be easily attributed to anything scary, just like the building had a very foul smell that they couldn't really pinpoint where it was coming from. Sometimes the lights would all just go out and, you know, there would be no reason as to why. And sometimes he'd be working late with his assistants and he would hear people walking around up above him, but of course nobody else lived in the building, so why would there be footsteps? 
apps. Now, a lot of those things can be easily explained away. They don't necessarily mean something paranormal, but you know, when they when it happens, you're not gonna feel, you know, calm about it. Like it's going to stick with you and you're going to like think about it subconsciously. Feel So he didn't deem it important enough to kind of bring up and ask his coworkers. After a few years of living there and dealing with some other small occurrences that he didn't really go into detail about, he was very vague, he got into a very massive fight with the landlord and decided to move. He figured that after moving, all of these small creepy occurrences would probably just end there and he would be home safe and there would be nothing else to worry about. I I mean, the broken shrine was there. So him and his assistants moved to an entirely new office. But actually, after moving, things became hella worse. And it all began with a bang, because the day that they moved in and everything was settled, Nakayama decided to finally address the, the creepy phenomenons that happened at the previous workplace to see what they thought about it. But as he began to talk about it, his mouth began to fill up with a taste of something he couldn't quite place. The next day he noticed that his gums were gushing blood and just thought, I probably need to go to the dentist. But the next day after that, he opened his mouth and his entire mouth was filled with nothing but blood blisters, the entirety of it. His whole mouth, my guy. And it was then that he placed where the taste was coming from. It was rotten blood. He immediately went to the hospital to go get checked out and he was diagnosed with a very rare blood disorder called ITP. He also found that if if he didn't get help right away, he would have been dead. And he mentions that this was probably the first time that he really thought about the broken shrine and wondered if that if it was a god trying to go and get revenge against him. He almost felt as if that it was the manga characters that he drew coming to get revenge on him themselves for making them, you know, creepy and unsettling. But of course, and he doesn't really say this, but I think it's pretty obvious, especially with the blood coming out of his mouth being featured in one of the manga chapters in PTSD Radio. He took a lot of the inspiration and the creepiness that he got from his previous workplace and put it into PTSD Radio. I, he, he never confirmed it, but I think it's pretty obvious, especially when he says he feels like that's like the manga kind of coming back to get revenge on him. And even though he still wasn't completely convinced it was this angry god, he was still thankful that he had new material for more chapters of PTSD Radio. After coming back, a lot of assistants ended up just quitting and not coming back without a word. And it all sort of started when some assistants would see a black figure. And when they did, something awful happened to them. They would either fall and hurt themselves or fall seriously ill or somebody in their family would get seriously ill or something in general, something really bad would just happen. And it's always immediately after they see this black figure. He mentions again that a few other things did happen, but he was again, very vague. And he explains why later, and I'll tell you why, but you know. He also noticed that when he tried talking to people about the experiences happening at the office, something bad would happen to the people who he would tell them to. They would fall very ill, or get in a really bad accident, or experience some other form of haunting themselves. Either way, someone around him would always suffer. And yeah, although it's something scary that happened in real life, he clearly took that material and put it into his own manga. I mean, it was scary, it was horrific, and it did make good material. But seemingly after a while, he noticed that every time he wrote, some more horrific things would happen. But he pushed through and he ended up making volume six, of course, because there's six volumes. But at the end of volume six, he became a little more specific, but also not at the same time. He said that after every chapter he released, something spooky always happened. Be it all of the clocks in the office all stopping exactly at midnight, be they digital or manual, they put up a talisman in the office in order to ward off any potential bad juju, bad any spirit, supernatural things. And it one day just ended up flying off the wall. And then he also specifies the black figure that I mentioned before and says that something happened to him with the black figure, but he doesn't want to specify because he's scared if he does say what happens that, you know, he's he will be afraid for his life. He would keep trying to write more chapters, but nearing the end of volume six, he realized that his face started to severely swell up out of nowhere and he couldn't talk. He kind of just sat there wondering what the hell just happened. And after just sitting there thinking, what could this be? Like, why is my face suddenly so swelled up? He remembered that he took notes. And in those notes, he wrote, I am going to try and say the full story of everything that happened to me as long as I am still alive to do it. And you know, after he wrote that, his face swelled up. So he ended up ripping it, those notes apart and his face began to unswell. There were some other going ons that happened that he didn't really, once again, want to specify because he was scared that the more he told, the more bad things would befall him. But he 
did end up saying that this would probably be it. This was this face swelling up and whatever else was enough for him to be like, I am scared for my life. I genuinely am scared for the people around me's lives. And I truly don't, I don't think I'm gonna go on with this anymore, okay? I kinda wanna live. So yeah, he says he is too scared to continue and hopes that we as the readers understand. Now that whole manga that Masaki made himself aside, PTSD Radio was chilling enough on its own, okay? So reading that backstory just made it even scarier. A mangaka being haunted and tortured by his own creation by accidentally potentially pissing off a god, I mean, it's literally, it's scary shit. It sounds made up. It doesn't sound like something like this, you know, it sounds like a PR stunt. You want people to read your horror manga, so you say you're being haunted by, you know, a ghost that you got inspired that you put into the manga. That's, that is top shelf shit to want to sell your like fucking manga. But he has been very adamant about it being truthful, so much so that apparently when you ask him in real life about it, he just clams up and doesn't really want to talk about it, which is kind of ironic considering he kind of put it in a manga. Quite evidently, he is traumatized to shit. But even though all of this happened, Nakayama went on to write more horror mangas. But he has not released any new chapters for PTSD Radio in six years, maybe more. So it is probably a safe bet that it will not come back, especially with the reasonings that he gave and how he still seems to be very traumatized. Looking at the art in volume five and seeing how, you know, scary it is, especially like, bro, she's just like going in, dog. Like, hello. Knowing the details that he was essentially being haunted and tortured and all of his assistants, everybody who helped make it, were going through their own sort of haunting while drawing these images makes me feel even deeply more scared. And with that being said, PTSD Radio, with all of the things that I now know, is probably the only horror or horrors manga that yeah, genuinely wasn't created with such a realistic touch to be horrific. Was, you know, clearly meant to be just a horror manga, but you know, adds a little more taste, a little more pinch of horror, knowing all this. Reading it again after knowing all of these details, like I said, it just gives you a little more extra goosebumps. It's kind of like when you know the extra details behind the making of the Exorcist movie in 1973. You know, all of the people getting hurt, all of the random scary things happening to the cast. It adds that little spung of fear. That you're looking at something that feels almost taboo because the inspiration that it caused the creators made this piece of fiction that could not potentially be fiction. It fills a morbid need in you that you didn't know you need filled, except you do know, and that's why you're gonna go pick up this bad boy. Honestly, I'm a little sad that he's not gonna ever kind of finish it. I'm never gonna know what happened with the god or, you know, all the other people. But I also understand that, you know, it's his mental health, it's his potentially physical health and the people around him, he wants everybody to be safe. And I'm sure knowing that all of these details and he truly believes them and knowing all of these things it probably still haunts him every day, scared that maybe one day he'll anger the god from the broken shrine that will potentially come back and get him or the people around him again. Either way, it was still a brilliant read and I can see why it is a fan favorite. I genuinely cannot recommend it enough if you want something kind of to scratch that little, that little, little, a little horror itch. And I just find it very interesting, personally. I, I had to do a video on this because it was, it's very interesting. You can't Clearly. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you are interested in supporting this channel, please check out my Patreon links in the description. Thank you again to everybody who's watched this and supported me. And I'll see you guys next time. Johnny! Uh -huh.